This is episode 54 with Jeremy Levin. Look, you got to use your voice. You got to stand out. You got, you know, you can't be scared or timid in these moments. You need to, you know, express how you feel. Because again, we work in TV, so there's no right or wrong answers here. There's just a lot of personal opinion. This is the Sports Business Classroom audio experience. If you recognize the voice, let me put a name with it. I'm Bo Estes, a host on NBA TV and an announcer on NBA.com. I'm one of the instructors at SBC. Welcome to the show. Now, breaking into the world of sports can seem daunting, but if you're looking for a leg up, you've come to the right place. Each week, we talk to top-notch figures all across the industry to bring you lessons and advice to learn from. Thanks for spending some time with us today, and let the experience begin. Landing a job in the NBA is no easy feat, no matter if it's as a player, front office exec, agent, or even in the league offices. But one surefire way to put yourself ahead of a competitive talent pool is an extensive knowledge of the collective bargaining agreement. And Larry Kuhn is undoubtedly, and I can't stress this enough, undoubtedly the leading expert on planet Earth on the subject, and he's been teaching the material to teams agents, media, and students now for over 20 years. And for the first time ever, he has an online course containing all of his material available for purchase to the general public. CBA Mastery with Larry Kuhn is available on demand with no expiration. So you'll have access to this material whenever you need it. To learn more and enroll, please visit sportsbusinessclassroom.com today. Every Thursday night during basketball season on TNT, the biggest and most important show in the game takes place. Of course, I'm talking about inside the NBA. And for my money, it's not just the biggest show in basketball. It's the most successful sports studio show we've ever seen in this business. And at the controls of that show is TNT's Jeremy Levin. And just as a little bit of background, Jeremy and I are not only co-workers, we've been friends since the mid-90s. So for me, watching Jeremy's career ascent from entry-level jobs, the very basic jobs, all the way up to the man at the controls for inside the NBA has, has been a personal thrill for me. I'm so happy for his success. But it's also been something that's really well earned. Nothing was given to Jeremy Levin. So in this episode, Jeremy is going to sort of take us through what it's like for TNT to put together an inside the NBA show starting on Monday all the way through Thursday. He'll tell us his role and sort of how it works with the whole team involved down at Turner Sports. It's it's a fascinating discussion. It's one I hope you enjoy and get something out of. So this is Jeremy Levin from Turner Sports. All right, thanks so much, Jeremy Levin, for joining us. Uh, before we dig into to the meat of our conversation, one thing I want to know, and I, I know you, and I know you don't like wander around saying, hi, I'm Jeremy Levin, producer of Inside the NBA. But when people do figure out that you are the producer of Inside the NBA, what's the question that you get asked the most by people? Mm. Uh, you're right. I don't walk around and say it. I just sit here with all the Emmys in the background. Exactly. Uh, sure, yeah. The, the quick story with this, though, is like this is our back office like that we actually never used pre-pandemic. Uh, and now, yeah. became, and so like it was like, oh, just put them in the back where no one ever goes. And now we're back here all the time. So I should really move them out to the mantle. So, uh, so now your whole family, when they have conversations there, looks like they have a bunch of trophies in the background. Exactly. Um, yeah, but I mean, I I guess probably, you know, the the question to get asked most is like, you know, like what's Charles like, or you know, um, what's Shaq like? Um, you know, kind of what are they, they, people want to know about the guys, right? And, and and the answer to that is they're they're all really genuinely good dudes. Like, um, you know, Charles uh, goes out of his way to make everyone feel like they're part of uh, his family. And, you know, Shaq, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen, seen Shaq help uh, people out. I mean, you've seen the viral videos with, you know, him getting the engagement ring for the guy at the ring store or whatever. But, like, that's genuinely his personality and who he is. And uh, Kenny's another good dude, obviously, um, who's, you know, North Carolina guy like Bo, so deep ties there. And then, you know, er Ernie, you know. Uh, Famously. Yeah, you just, you just can't get better than Ernie Johnson. I, I I like to say 
if I can live half the life of Ernie Johnson, then I'm doing pretty darn good in my life. So, yeah, it's it's hard to express to people. I I don't know them like you do, but I do know them, and I you know when they see me, they know me. Just how genuinely nice they are, genuinely, and they care about the people like you that have worked with them for years. I I, I you can see it in the room, you can feel it in the room. I think at least. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, yeah, and I mean not just me, but the camera guys and graphics operators and uh, everybody EBS operators, like everybody, they 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 make sure to. I'll go out of the way to say hey to everybody and, you know, make sure everyone feels included. So, um, you know, yeah, it, that's one of the special things about the show for sure is, um, you know, it's easy to say like, oh, hey, we're part of a big family. But like those guys really um, try to make that a reality. Um, we're recording on a Thursday night. Typically, this is an inside day for you. Uh, so why don't you take me and everybody through like what the preparation is for you for a Thursday night show, and I, I assume it doesn't start today. I'm, I'm quite confident, in fact. So t- tell me what tell me what that preparation looks like, and, and how it works for you as you build up to a Thursday night tip off, and, and from there. Yeah, I'll just take you through my general week because yeah, like we started today for the show, we'd be in trouble. So uh, that wouldn't go well. So um, Monday, Monday, you know, Monday's a huge meeting day at Turner just in general. Lots of staff meetings across the board, but we have one that is dedicated to uh, inside the NBA. So we take an hour to kind of um, just set up what's happening this week, maybe two weeks out, uh, you know, with playoffs coming up, like we start touching base about playoffs. So it's just a good time to get everybody. uh, Previously, we get everybody in a room. Now we get everybody on a, you know, Zoom X call. uh, And we just kind of go over, one, what's happening and what's approaching. And so everyone kind of has a sense of that, but then uh, a chance to share ideas, um, not only, you know, for me, but Ernie is a part of that call. Again, we talked about like one of the big philosophies of the show is ideas come from anywhere. So it's not just going to be me. It's not just going to be Ernie or Charles. It's going to be, you know, it could be the production assistant. It could be a person in marketing. Like it could literally be anybody. So we try to make that room big and have a lot of people in there. Um, and just share ideas about, you know, hey, I saw this thing and I could be a good graphic or this could be funny in the show or maybe this could be a serious conversation. Um, I mean, someone a couple weeks ago brought up May 25th is the anniversary of George Floyd. And um, what are we going to do on that day in the middle of playoffs? So, um, again, like it can be super serious like that. So, again, just but to get people thinking and like um, that's where the ideas come from and that's where they begin and that's where they germinate. And then we try to, you know, my job as a producer is to take all the ideas that are getting sent to me and filter them down to the best of the best and work with our talent to, uh, you know, get those to air. So that's, so Monday. that's, that's Monday. Yeah. That's Monday. There's Monday. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that's, Tuesday. that's very broad for you, right? That's okay. We've got a lot of stuff and now we start to narrow going towards Tuesday, right? Sure. Yeah. And then, and then, so Tuesday we have a smaller group meeting. Uh, there's probably like 10 of us in that room and I call it ideas, ideas, ideas. And so we'll take some of those ideas that were thrown out in the Monday meeting and really like boil them down to how do we execute those on air? What would that really look like? You know, cause it's one thing to say like, Oh, hey, I got this uh, idea of let's get Charles to uh, name players in the NBA based on just seeing their photo, right? Like, or maybe, yeah, like that'd be the idea. But like, all right, how do you execute that? All right, we need a graphic like this. We need uh, some music. We need light cues to make it feel like a game show. So we really kind of try to, on Tuesday, take those good ideas that came out of Monday or the week before the Monday meeting. And, hey, all right, this Thursday, this is what we want to execute Um, so how, how can we go about that? What are we going to need? And so we're starting to get stuff ready for the show. Like, yeah, Hey, we need to tell scenic, we need, you know, X, Y, and Z, or, uh, we need to bring in extra lighting guys, or we need a mannequin because we're going to make a fake, uh, uh, statue dedication for Kenny, whatever those things are. We try to really kind of get down in the weeds on Tuesday with that stuff. So emerging from that meeting, all these people sort of have, you have marching orders. You, we all have to do these things to start getting ready for Thursday, right? And everybody has to be invested in that. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And coming out of the meeting, if, if, you know, that might be like, hey, we need to incorporate these three other people. So we'll go track those people down. Our production manager, Bridget Morris, who's on top of all that stuff, does a great job of kind of uh, the glue that brings everything together because she's got contacts in our studios. She's got contacts outside of our yep. studios. We need to bring in outside <clears throat> vendors. And so she does a lot of that stuff for us, which is uh, super helpful. Um, and then typically, you know, on a regular week now, we have the NBA on TNT Tuesday show. So, 
go in and work on that show. <clears throat> and that show has a similar cadence as the days are different. So we go in and do that show on Tuesday night. Um, and then Wednesday is kind of the nuts and bolts day where uh, I go into our software called iNews. And that's where we like kind of program the actual physical rundown or roadmap of what we do. So we call it a, a rundown. Um, and like that is just like it's line by line of how we want to execute the show. So everyone's on the same page. Again, it's your roadmap. Like, all right, exit two is in two minutes or whatever. You just kind of go line by line. So you know everything that's coming up. The director knows, the graphics people know, the tape operators know. Um, so so Wednesday, I plug and play all that stuff in there. I'll send out lists with, hey, we need Steph Curry's last game VO. We need this uh, where this guy twisted his ankle. That could come up in conversation. So we have that video ready. So that's kind of Wednesday's day. And, and so everybody knows that format's sort of the plan for everybody and each person with their own responsibilities can look at that and say, okay, what am I doing from that big guide that you put out? Right. For sure. Yeah. And I would say the other kind of guiding principle of the show is that we, we don't, we, we want to be unscripted. Um, this is the challenge for you, right? Having a plan versus being able to react. For sure. And like, I mean, that, that it, it's a huge, it's a huge thing, right? Because like me <clears throat> as a producer of a show that, puts time and effort into creating this rundown, right? Like, and like, it makes it easy. You want to execute this. Everybody knows which direction we're going. But again, the beauty of this show of Inside the NBA is that it goes unscripted. And so, you know, we could have this whole pregame show laid out. Charles walks in and says, you know, hey, Arnell, I want to talk about whatever. All right, we all pivot right really quick and <laughs> adapt and, and start covering that because – uh, that's going to be better TV. So. And that's a bit unique for this show more than other shows. I don't want to, I don't want to speak for other shows, but the, you guys really go with it. You have a, you have a really solid plan, but if something you feel in your gut, we need to go this way, you just go right. And you guys are all accustomed to that. Uh, the professionals on the show. For sure. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like, and look, I work a lot of NBA TV shows and, and we try to, you know, incorporate some of that, but you know, NBA TV, NBA TV is a lot more scripted and, um, you know, hey, this is what this post game show is going to look like. It's going to have these highlights, these highlights, these highlights. It's it's a lot more um, scripted. But you know, again, you try to react in the moment. But yeah, like with inside, we'll use social media, and like you never know what someone's going to send on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. And like that could end up being a whole segment by itself just because they saw some tweet or they saw some you know post on Instagram that that gets everybody going. And then we'll try to lean into that moment, you know, and like some of the funny things are like you, you, you put up one tweet about, you know, Kenny looks like this dog standing at a board or whatever. Uh, and then next thing you know, you're getting like 10 more tweets of dogs or whatever. And it all just kind of starts building upon itself. So that's kind of some of the magic. In let, let me just digress for a moment. So you guys are in a control room uh, and you're producing. So you're really watching the show. How does this information get communicated to you? And how do you work through that information while still watching the show? Uh, with social specifically? Yeah, or anybody, but yeah, in this case, yeah. social. Yeah, so we're, we're on, we, we wear headsets um, for communication. So like, you know, I'll just have a headset on and then we have a communications panel where I can basically talk to, I can push a button and talk to anybody in, in the building or at this point out of the building. So like with our social guy, normally uh, Andrew Perezioso, he'd be, he would be in the building working with us, but because uh, of COVID, we've tried to limit the numbers. So he actually does all his work from home. He has a laptop that remotes into our studio. He is on headset also, so I can talk to him at his house. And he is basically just combing through social. And he's like, here's the, you know, five I found. And, you know, we'll kind of go through together. I like that one. I don't like that one. And he's just kind of rotating them through the night. And, um, you know, he's got a great sense for what will get the guys kind of going. So he, he's combing, uh, you know, all social stuff from Reddit to Twitter to Instagram to um, literally whatever to find, you know, the gold that's going to, you know, create a reaction. Okay, so we, we've gotten up to Wednesday and we're doing nuts and bolts. Is, is that is that good for Wednesday or is there more? Yeah, that yeah, that's Wednesday, Wednesday night. We're putting the actual format together and kind of sending out the marching orders, what we need to edit, what sound we need to pull or video, whatever we need to pull that's relevant for the show that we think is going to happen on Thursday. So um, you and I are talking at about noon on Thursday. What's what's happening now? What have you gotten? What have you already done today? And how are you getting ready? Yeah, I try to kind of uh, rest in the morning. So, you know, get up, watch NBA TV probably because I won't stay up late on Wednesday. I'll try to get a good night's sleep. Uh, Wednesday, it's a late night. Uh, Thursday, Thursday, yeah. And you're coming off a late night Tuesday. So, like, you know, my sleep schedule's all, like, up and down. <laughs> I try to get a good night's yeah. sleep Wednesday. So I won't stay up and watch a lot of basketball. So try to get, 
you know, watch NBA TV, kind of their overnight wheel show to show, see all the highlights, make sure you didn't miss anything, you know, read a lot on the internet, check Twitter, just kind of see what happened late night in the game. You know, those West Coast games, did the Lakers do something, Clippers, uh, yeah. Warriors, all those kind of, so you're just making sure you didn't miss any storylines late last night, um, you know, checking on injuries and, you know, who's going to play, not play in your game in the doubleheader tonight. Um, so that's just kind of my morning, just kind of hanging around my house, doing that stuff. And then I typically go in around, you know, 12, one o'clock, um, get in there. And then, you know, people start filtering in around two or three. Um, I'll try to meet with Ernie at some point in that window between one and three. Ernie, you know, gets in, you know, you talk about like first guy in the gym. Last Famously night. early. He's, he's that guy. So, uh, you know, I try to beat him, but I can't beat him. So, he, you know, I, I don't know. I, he might sleep in his office. I don't know. But he, <laughs> uh, he's in there. So I'll try to, you know, get 10 minutes with him and just, double check what's on his radar and that we're still aligned with everything that we want to um, talk about in the show. And that, you know, kind of going back to that Monday meeting, cause that's probably the last time I talked to him was on Monday. So just making sure, Hey, these are still the five important things we want to hit on or whatever. So doing that kind of, you know, mid afternoon or whatever, again, two, three, the rest of the crew starts filtering in. So you're just kind of talking with them about, you know, Hey, you got everything you need. Any, any weird things happening here? Um, you know, like our graphics operator, Morgan Allison, she just created this whole thing with her operator. Like we talk about standings a lot now this time of year in the NBA. So, you know, previously we'd have like one page of one through eight, but now with this play in tournament, you got to take it all the way down to at least 10, if not 11 and 12. So she worked with the operator, like have this kind of like scrolling up and down. Oh, good. So it's, it's, it's pliable almost. So it's like, Hey, I want to see the bottom. So whoop, it slides up the screen and you see the bottom. Ooh, I want to go back to the top and slide yep. back you one through eight. So, uh, you know, she was kind of, she'd tell me about like, Hey, this is what we created. Do you want to look at it? Oh yeah, it's great. That's awesome stuff. Um, so we do that. And then three hours before we're on the air. So typically this year we've been on the air at seven 30 with a 15 minute pregame show. So, uh, three hours before that four 30, we'll have our, uh, large production meeting. Again, this is where we just kind of get everybody in the room to run through that line by line format again. To make How sure many people are we talking about roughly in this meeting? I would say 50. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, it comes and goes. It just depends. Like, but like, you know, there's someone from PR in there. There's someone from marketing. There's um, all our uh, tape operators, our technical director. Everyone, everyone's just kind of in that meeting so they can hear what the flow of the night is going to be like. Hey, we got this special guest. We got to record something with somebody after the first halftime. It's going to appear later in the show. Um, Everyone just kind of has a working knowledge of what's going to happen tonight. And you as the producer, what are you trying to come out of that meeting with in your mind? What, how are you trying to feel or, or, or arrive post that meeting? Yeah, again, I just want everybody to have a clear understanding of what's on the table for the night. So, um, you know, these are kind of the – this is the expectations of – um, what's going to be a pregame, postgame. This is what our neato uh, stat of the night is going to be, and this is how we're going to execute it. So everyone has a really good feeling for, yeah, okay, I got a clear picture of how this puzzle is going to be put together tonight. Um, that's kind of what I want to get out of that meeting. And so you walk out and uh, you, you've probably, you know, everybody's had their input. Do you go back up to the control room? Or are you going to talk to Ernie, check in with Ernie again? How, how, what is it? Yeah. No real routine there. Yeah, so I, so after the meeting, it's typically about dinner time. So everyone goes and gets a dinner, which I give everyone like an a hour break for dinner. Um, and then people come back from that. And then we'll kind of re rehearse just independently, not, you know, not with our talent. Because, again, one of the other things, our, our talent, Ernie will, will go through stuff with us. But like Charles, Kenny, and Shaq, they will not walk out on set till a couple minutes before on the air, which, again, is it's almost part of the fun, right, at this point. For sure, because like we don't want them to rehearse, you know, what they're going to say. And, oh, I said this great thing. Now I got to remember what I said in rehearsal. And it just kind of creates a mind lock. So like we kind of like this natural, just com free flowing conversation. Again, like you and I, we haven't talked about anything uh, in this, yep. that we're, you know, in, th in this meeting that we're going to talk about. So it's a free flowing conversation. You know, I'm, I'm not like, oh, I told Bo when we talked on the phone, <laughs> I was going to say this really good thing about whatever. Like, so it's yeah. a more natural conversation. I mean, it's how, how you would talk with a lot of your buddies. Um, so we try to capture that within the spirit of the show, but so we might have a technical rehearsal for just our, like if Nito, like for example, one night we did a Jeopardy spinoff, right? So like, but that takes some, you just can't wheel that out. So technically we wanted to run through our, right, how the buzzer is going to work, how are we going to set up these podiums? How are we going to put the questions in the screen? So we will do some of that technical stuff on our own just to make sure, uh, technically we got it all functioning. 
Um, and that all works. And a lot of that's on our director, Steve Fiorello. He helps uh, honcho that load a lot because like you know I'll, I'll kind of come up with this blueprint again with a lot of input from a lot of people I'll, I'll lay out the rundown but then he's the guy physically executing it kind of live in the show um so again rehearse that with just kind of the staff uh and then if again if we're on 7 30 ernie will kind of go out around seven o'clock we might run through you know hey here's the graphic we have for our sales element just to make sure he's dialed in and yeah i like those numbers or hey let's tweak this one thing um so he gets out around seven uh, again, every, the other guys walk out around seven twenty-five, and then we're live on the air at seven. And your energy's getting there now, right? You guys are. Do you feel like the juice still uh, after all these years of doing it? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you're doing a live show, there's a little bit of um, you know nervous energy, and you don't want to screw things up, and you want things to go right. Um, I would say, you know, uh, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. But like on big events, like you know, conference finals, all-star Sunday, you know, NCAA March Madness, like you definitely feel it in those moments. I mean, you know, you just know a lot of people are watching and you want to have a good show. So, um, you know, if you didn't get that, like, you know, I wouldn't want that feeling all the time, but like, I think that's a good, like keeps you on edge, keeps you, you know, engaged and locked in. Yeah. So I think you want some of that. It's a little bit like sports in that way, at least from my experience in that you have that going in, and then you get on the air and a couple minutes into being on air, you're okay. You're, you're focused again. You're, you feel a lot more relaxed once things are rolling. Is that right for you? Yeah, I, I think that's right. And it's, and it's just managing that adrenaline and that, that pressure as well. Right. Like you don't want to overwhelm you or like take you outside of your comfort zone or what you normally do or how you normally execute, which it can like, I mean, you know, I mean, again, you, you sports like that's, it happens. Like, you know, people can get thrown off their game and, and you know, some people are not high pressure game people, right? Like it just, it's a different yeah. level of thing. So, um, you know, you kind of have to train your body to like, okay, yeah, I know this feeling it's okay. Um, I'm going to press through it and, you know, hopefully execute a good show. Um, okay. So you guys, uh, one thing I want to get to before we go live on the air, uh, you mentioned Steve Fiorello, who's super talented director. Uh, you guys are sort of in charge of the show. Break down sort of the responsibilities and how that divides out between producer and director on, on a sports television show for people who don't know. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll get into those two roles. I think with me and Steve, though, what makes it really special is like, um, like we're kind of like an old married couple almost at this point. Like we work <laughs> together a lot. And like, so he knows like he can read me a lot. I can read him a lot. But like he also, what I love about him is he doesn't just wear his director cap and he's like, all I'm worried about is directing the show. He'll put on a producer content cap and be like, what if we did this? What do we talk about this? Like, and it'll really force me to think critically about what we're doing. And also like, I don't think he minds. Like sometimes I'll, and I'm not a director at all, but like, I'll be like, Hey Steve, you know, have we thought about shooting this or showing it this way? And again, I think it's some of that back and forth that, that really make it special and great. But again, like my, my job as producers kind of create this blueprint print, this rundown of how we want to execute a show and get everybody on the page there. Steve's job is to execute that blueprint by calling cameras. He's directing the cameras. Hey, camera one, get a shot of Shaq. Camera two, get a shot of Ernie. Uh, ready, camera one, take camera one. That's the one that Ernie's reading on right now. All right, get ready to roll this videotape of Steph Curry. All right, roll the videotape of Steph Curry, take it. So he's working with a technical director that's hitting all the buttons that he's calling for, uh, but it's really their show once we're live on air. They're they're kind of dictating what, what you're seeing on TV. At that and they're point. following along that plan format until you say, hey, we're going to go a different direction, right? Correct, yeah. And like, again, the great thing with Steve is like, he might he might see that before I do right like and he'll so he'll 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 veer off the format he'll, he'll be like oh look what Chuck's doing right now like I'm gonna show that he's he's got this crazy expression on his face or Shaq just fell like we didn't script that so you know like start <laughs> and that's the trust down. between you guys yeah what's that and that's the trust between you guys having uh, worked together so long yeah a hundred percent like I want him to do that I want to lean in and I hope he feels the same way too you know again I think it's it's finding that balance and and not being super pushy but like you know if you see something say something and it's gonna it's all it's all for the betterment of the show it's not about like hey you're stepping on my toes as a producer or i'm stepping on his toes as a director it's about we just want the best possible show and so like we're gonna both share our feedback in real time about what's happening and so uh you guys are live on the air and and, and you're sitting in the chair um i guess i guess the pre-game show is one thing then you do 
one or two half times based on how many games you have that night. And then inside, tell me about h- how you navigate that night. I mean, are you are you saving your best stuff for inside? Are you do you try to come on the air with some really? How do you work that? Like, is there a different feel for like this feels more like an inside thing we approach, and this feels more like a pregame? How does that all work? I mean, I, I wouldn't say we try to save stuff for inside. I think you know, like we we format the whole night out how we think it's going to happen, and like in pregame it. Most of our pregames are short. They're only typically 15 minutes. We don't have a lot of space uh, to get into a lot of depth there. So, you know, if we know something's going to be longer. We have a great story feature, like four or five minutes about a guy or a player, like put that in inside the NBA um, because there's just going to be more time and space to react to moments like that. But, um, I, I, you know, kind of one uh, another overarching thing of the show is like we just say, like, we want to we want to create moments, right? Like we want to create moments in the show. So we a lot of times we don't know what that moment's going to be. It, it could be it could be a player having a great night. It could be our guys interviewing a player at the end of the game and creating a moment in something they ask the player and the player's reaction to that. Um, it could be it could be something from the Internet that just creates a you know buzz around the studio that night. It could be a pre-planned neato that you know, we've been working on for weeks and, and that's our moment. But like, we really want to just generate these moments <clears throat> that engage our audience and our fans and our community um, that they respond to. And, um, you know, I think we've done a pretty good job at doing that. So where, where it goes at the night, it's not really important to us. It's just kind of um, more covering the stories throughout the night and, and executing on the points that we knew we wanted to execute on um, throughout the night. So, you know, I mean, like we could be doing a halftime and, you know, again, we could have something planned, but in another game that's not our network, maybe, you know, Steph's going for 50 points already. It's like, all right, well, shoot, we got to update that. Let's let's get that in there. And, you know, who knows what that would generate. And you talk about that trust you have between you and Steve. And I, I know that that uh, extends, well, frankly, to everybody, but to EJ as well. To If his gut says, man, we got to follow this lead and go down this path, he goes and you guys chase him down it too because of that level of trust, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, it, it goes every way. It goes every way with our talent, with us. Yeah. in the control room. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, Ernie, a lot of times will say like, Hey, hold on before we go to break. I really want to talk about it. like, great. All right. Like we encourage and you just that. follow. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. Or, you know, sometimes Charles will be like, Hey, do I got time to make another point? And you know, yeah, sure. Charles. Hey, Jeremy, know. bring that thing back up. You'll right. For sure. Yeah. He'll, yeah. All the time. Like, Hey, let's see the standings again. And like, it's another thing we try to do with the show is like, you know, it's, it's not like we got like some huge secrets we're trying to hold anybody to here. Like, so it's like, yeah, like it's okay if you say like, let me see that graphic again on TV or Jeremy, can I, you know, like get like, it's just, it's kind of pulling the curtain back and showing some of that. It and really is. It, it's real life. And you know, if there's a mistake, we try to lean into our mistakes and not run from them. The more like make fun of them. Cause again, like we all make mistakes and in all our daily lives. And I think everybody can relate to that. So rather than like pretending, Hey, this didn't happen and it was a bad mistake. Like let's lean into it and uh, try to, you know, uh, have a little fun with it instead. Is there, are there things that, that sort of are the ingredients to your most successful shows? Do you, do you say like, okay, these are the common elements when, when we have a great, great show and they're, you know, famously this show where it stands historically, they're all pretty darn good, but are, are there things that you say, these are the common themes that make some shows really stand out or is there nothing? It's just, it just each night is a unique experience. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the beauty of it, right? Like each night's its own experience. So you never know what that moment is going to be or what's going to, you know, we've had plenty of neato stats that we thought we were going to, you know, knock it out of the park and be the best thing ever. And they fall flat. Right. And then we've had other ones that like just come out of thin air and they're the best thing ever. So, um, you know, I've, I've seen it, I've seen it go both ways for sure. Um, you know, and kind of in, in, in that creating those moments and, and kind of capturing what happens through the night. And your show is not how, uh, when you when you are learning to be a producer, the way you guys do your show is not to, more, the NBA TV model is more traditional producing, right? So you had to learn almost a different muscle to do this show, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you got, it's, it's, um, you, you got to let your hands off the steering wheel, which is really hard, right? Like, as a guy that your job is to produce a show and, and, and kind of like keep it on the tracks and guide it down the road. Like you, again, you want to execute that form. Naturally you want to execute that format because you remain in control. Cause you're like, all right, I know next we're going to go to this <laughs> item and next we're going to do this and then we're going to go to commercial. And so you're staying in control. You're holding the wheel, you're guiding it down. But again, 
some of the best moments with inside is when you let go of the wheel and the car veers right or it veers left. And like, you, you gotta be willing to crash into those guardrails though, because it's going to happen. And again, we're going to have things that bomb that don't go well, but we're going to have things that are great and they're going to create great moments. But, but holding onto the steering wheel and just forcing it down this way is not going to work with inside. And so it is scary to let go as a guy that, you know, my job is to control this, to let go and kind of take a step back and be like, wherever this goes, it's going to be something and just let it happen. That's it's hard. it's it's funny because I've been in that control room before in some of those really hilarious moments on the show. People in the control room are laughing too because you're watching it happen and it's your show. Oh, for uh, sure. it's, so it's it's really funny to you guys. How are you? Uh, like you talked about those guardrails. Are are you? You know, your job is to sort of at least bring it back a little bit when you get concerned. How do you, in your mind, judge that? Is it a feel thing from all these years? Is it is, is there something in your mind that you say, God, I got to get back back on track? Where where are you on that? Because it seems like that's a that's a tough job because you can let it go and it's so funny and so good uh, that it has to be entertaining. But at some point you have to do a basketball show too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's definitely a feel thing. And um, I mean, this actually kind of goes back to a question you asked a couple of times ago, but like when, when people come up and like, tell me like, Oh, this was great about the show. I can't like, it's never about like a basketball conversation, right? It's never like, Oh, Hey, that discussion on the warriors was amazing right? Like it's, it's, it's everything else that that show does that people that resonate with people um, and kind of, again, create these moments. So um, it, it, it's weird. Like I think of it as an entertainment show more than a sports show. We definitely, sports is our vehicle, but like it, I think of it more of as an entertainment show. So um, you do have to get it back on the tracks at some point. And yeah, you do have to show all the highlights of the games or, you know, like, Hey, so-and-so just went off in a post-game press conference after the game. Like we got to get that sound bite turned around and put it on air because again, that's what we're doing. We're covering the league. Um, and you know, Draymond green or whoever it is going off in the post-game press conference might spur another moment from Charles reacting to that. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's finding that balance. It's a lot of, um, you know, experimentation and doing it and finding that comfort zone. But yeah. And, and, and Ernie's also good about having a sense of where, you know, when that conversation really got wrap really up good. and again, you talk about having trust in him and he'll be like, all right, guys, let's, you know, let's get back to whatever it is. So uh, when it's slipping too far, usually he catches it or I'll catch it and, you know, we'll try to get it back on, on track. You, you and I have talked about this metaphor before, but you, you're sort of the coach for inside and EJ sort of the quarterback for inside. And it, it, it really is a metaphor that you can, so it can be point guard, quarterback, whatever sure. you want to call it. Yeah. But, but that sort of trust on the field is what EJ has to deal with. He has to deal with that. And you're the coach sort of looking at, okay, where's this game plan going and what are we doing with this? Right? Yeah, no, I mean, a hundred percent. Like, Hey, we, we laid out the game plan and we got our play sheet and we know we know we're executing, yep. but you know, Ernie gets up to the line of scrimmage and sees their blitzing and he's going to call the audible. And you know, like, that's great. Like that's what we want him to do. Like, again, like, I, it, it's a hard as a producer to let go again. I, I want to get in <laughs> control of that and I want to call the plays, but like it's better when he's calling the plays or, you know, shoot, Charles he gets in the wildcat and he's calling the play, you know, like <laughs> that's, 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 but that's against your training, but it's the best outcome too. For sure. A hundred percent. So, so yeah, like we, dude, we got, you know, we got Tom Brady out there running our offense, man. And I'm not going to question anything he wants to do or say, because that guy's got more of these Emmys at his house than I do. And he, there's yep. a reason he's great at it. So, uh, you know, and you got a guy like Tom Brady or Ernie Johnson, ride him all the way, man. It's funny because you mentioned uh, you see the show as an entertainment basketball show. It's, 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 it's People think it's hilariously funny. So yeah. how do you balance that? Because I know that there's an emerging uh, analytics crowd in the NBA and stuff like that. And so you're not as much their lane. There's another show out there somewhere that, that sort of focuses on them. So where do you, where do you sort of uh, steer the ship in yeah. regards to basketball, entertainment, basketball, entertainment? How do you handle that? Yeah. I mean, we, you know, again, I think we talk basketball and those guys do have some great basketball conversations. So uh, we'll do that. And like, especially as we, you know, get in the playoffs and these games mean something and they matter, yeah. like, you know, this, this, whatever play really impacted the game. Like we will have those conversations and we will definitely do that a hundred percent of the time. Um, I do think it's kind of funny though. Like if you check social after, you know, it's like, uh, you know, like these guys aren't, you know, like again, the analytics, like I'm, I'm not against it by any means. Like, sure. 
the way the sure. game goes. But like, that's not what this show is about. That's not what this show was created for. If you want analytics or you want a serious basketball breakdown in the regular season, like there's probably another show or another venue or another vehicle that you should be watching. Cause that's not what Charles is about. That's not what Shaq's about. Um, you know, I think Kenny and Ernie are probably a little more about that. And again, like I'm like, I, I let, I'm a huge basketball fan and I want to, I definitely respect the game and want to cover it in the right way. But uh, that is, that's not, that's not the makeup of what this show does. It's just a different show. There's sure. another, sh- yeah, yeah, this show is hugely entertaining. And you, you talked about it, what it does. It, and, and you see this on social every single night as inside is unfolding. And I know you're working the show and I'm watching on social you get those moments yeah, and you, you almost have the reaction to your moment can create another moment, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, yes. that And that's what I talked about. Like sometimes those, those are the great nights, right? Like when things just build upon each other and like, you're like, you just, it keeps building and building this bigger moment. Like again, the Shaq falling thing happened a long time ago, but he fell and like the internet just like, Oh, this is the funniest thing ever. And then it became memes of Shaq fault. Like it just, it just kind of kept building upon itself and upon itself. And the guys uh, are laughing at themselves. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, like, look, look, uh, we, we could talk about this a lot, but like, dude, Charles likes to give it, but like he takes it, man. Like the, he will laugh at himself and we will make fun of him. And like to have that thick skin and, and to be a superstar in his realm and let, let us poke fun at him and, you know, put up a tweet about why is he eating so many donuts or, you know, th- how do you get so big or fat or like, look, uh, again, he gives it, but he will take it a hundred percent of the time also. And, and that's some of the beauty also. Like cause if, if you had a guy up there that was kind of like, Oh, you can't make fun of me. Like then that'd be yeah. hypocritical and, uh, not cool anyway. So he's unique in that way because I think they all can take it and, sh- and, and Charles to a degree. He almost enjoys being made fun of. And it, it, it looks like he's having as much fun laughing at himself as he has at something else. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yes, he will laugh at himself all day. And, and, and again, that's what, that's, what's great about Charles, man. Like again, he'll give it out. He will also take it. So um, if it was the other way, I'd feel different about it. But like, and and it taught me a lot, right? Like, look, I got to be able to take it too, man. Like, yeah. you know, people are not going to like things or be whatever. Like, okay, that's cool. Like, <laughs> that's your point of view. Great, man. You enjoy that. And I'll keep doing what I do, you know? What's the best part of doing the show for you? Um, The relationships and, you know, the fun we have. Like, um. It's it's like I I think back like I like I I'm told like I I meet with a lot of younger students and people trying to get in the business like I could never be an accountant man like if I was going into a job and I worked nine to five and I was doing the same thing every day day after day like I would go crazy like it, I'm not cut for that life I love uh, living in these moments these big events covering sports for a living like look I mean I grew up loving sports and you know going to these games and paying to go to these games and now I get to just watch them like. How lucky am I? I get to hang out with Ernie Johnson and Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal in a green room and see their reaction to these moments. Like, you, like I, you're paying me to do that, which is yeah. even crazier, right? Like, I would don't tell my work, but I would almost do that for free, right? I mean, like that's that's a like we'll edit that part right out, Jeremy. Okay, don't perfect. Worry. <laughs> uh, it's funny because uh, well, you and I and, and our wives, like everybody knows, we work a lot of hours. There's, it's not like it's just, it's fun, but it, it is fun. Yeah. But it's also, there's tons of hours involved, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, look, I mean, that, that the, the detriment is it's nights, it's weekends, it's holidays. I can't tell you how many Christmases and Thanksgivings I've missed. And it's tough as, you know, my kids, this is my daughter. This is like over here, shoot, like, this is like 10 years ago. She's now like 16, all grown up, which yeah. but like, I can't tell you how many things I miss, which sucks, you know? Um, yeah. so that, that's one of the downsides for sure. Like, you know, where if you have a nine to five job and you're just counting the dollar signs or whatever, you know, adding up the numbers, you, you get, you get all that off. So, uh, but again, like I would go stir crazy doing that. And again, I'm appreciative to my wife and my family for allowing me to do this, uh, and giving, yeah. me, you know, like, you know, that freedom and flexibility to chase my dreams, so to speak. Is that the biggest challenge of the job is the schedule and the travel, or is there another challenge that's bigger? Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that's the biggest challenge. I mean, the schedule is what it is. We all know what it is. You know, yep. you again, signed I, up for it. Yeah, I signed up for it. My wife, I met her a long, long time ago. She knew it. She, you know, she, she knew it, you know, the first week I yeah. met her, and, you know, I'm working crazy hours. 
Um, and so, you know, that kind of is what it is, I, you know, um, I'm trying to think like the most challenging thing about this job is, is one, I want to keep it fresh, um, and exciting oh, and relevant. Like, you know, like I, I don't want it to just like be like, Hey, we've been doing the same thing for 10 years or five years. Like how can we continue to grow the show and make it relevant? Um, to people that are watching today. So like, that's something I think about a lot, like just keeping it entertaining and always moving forward and not just kind of resting on our laurels. Right. Like uh, we can always grow the show and make it better. And so like, that's, that was cool with social. Like, again, it's been like 10 years now, but like, we're still trying to find new ways to incorporate social media and have a, have the fans have a voice and like all that. So like, how do we keep growing and uh, evolving the show? That's a big thing. And then, and then just managing everything, right? Like managing all the personalities uh, above me, my bosses, the talent with me, the, my coworkers, Steve Fiorello, the people that work, you know, for us, uh, the production assistants, all that. It's a big ship. Yeah, it's a huge ship you're steering, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of personality all over the place, right? Again, not from just any one person, but like. There's a lot of personality. So you got to manage all that across the course of a season when people are getting tired and run down. Um, and again, you know, I think, I think, you know, the, the example of a coach is a great job, right? Like a, a great analogy, because I think a head coach probably has to do that a lot in a locker room, right? Like he's got high profile players, low profile players, people that are pissed at each other, people that are, you know, I'm not getting the ball enough, like all that. Like, and so, yeah. Um, and, and if you don't manage that and you're you're a coach and you're not doing that, then you're not going to be a coach for very long. So you're not doing your job. Yeah. No. Yeah. So. So, uh, you know, that that's a huge that's just a huge thing to manage all that. You mentioned uh, that, that your your wife knew what your hours were like when you started. Let's let's take us back. You and I, 100 years ago, uh, started on this show at the very, very entry entry level. I mean, so so you sort of know the jobs where they start, where they all go. And, and that's, that's probably a value to you, right? Knowing it all. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, you, you know, they say you want to know any company, start in the mail room and work your way up. Right. I mean, that's essentially what you and I did, Bo. I mean, we, we literally started in the mail room, which was the yeah. logging room back then. And it was like literally the size of a closet, but there was like 15 yep. of us and we're recording every play that happens. And then the next step was, Oh, you get to edit that video. So we did that. And then, become a production assistant and you're learning to build the graphics and go out and create feature stories and all that. And then you become an associate director and you learn about the timing of the show and working with sales and getting commercials in. I mean, and so, yeah, I've hit every step of every level. Like I didn't just one day pop in and start producing inside the NBA. I mean, this has been a, I mean, shoot, you know, all data is here, but we started in like 19, I remember I moved out here the summer of 1995. So, uh, though I feel like it was just like three or four years ago, I, I sadly realized how old I am. I'm like, <laughs> my God, that's a long time. Um, yeah. but I mean, yeah, we, we've seen a lot and you do a lot and, and that's how you get better. Uh, you know, that Malcolm Gladwell book, uh, he talks about 10,000 hours, right? Like you have to have 10,000 hours to become really a true, you know, professional, great, you know, some at something. And, you know, believe me, I think I've logged my 10,000 hours. So, uh, you know, we, we may be double that by now, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I wonder, uh, you know, uh, if you ever get a chance to reflect and go, man, alive, we, you know, I started logging this show and now I'm producing the inside. The, do you ever like step outside and go, this is really something or are you too in it to even have that chance? Yeah. I probably don't do it uh, as often as I should. Um, you know, as I start to get a little older, I start to get a little more sentimental and like think back and, and look back a little bit, but yeah, I mean, we are, we are just busy in the grind of, of doing these shows and all the other shows we do, but um, it is pretty cool when you, when, you know, when you take a step out or, you know, we got other friends that have left the industry and you catch up with them and, you know, you kind of talk about the times that, that we had back then and, you know, just seeing how far, um, you know, I can take it and you can, you know, you can take it. It, it, it is cool to, to kind of think about it in the big picture like that for sure. And, um, you know, I'm very fortunate. I've had a lot of things go right my way. I've worked hard to get here, but definitely, you know, fortunate that, you know, I've caught some lucky breaks and been in the right place at the right time. And I've also been in the wrong place at the wrong time though. So, you know, it goes both ways for sure. I, I, I think, I don't know if it was you or a friend, Dave Evans, but I remember like back in our logging days, like I went and edited a highlight and I edited the highlight and um, it, 
like so it was like highlights highlights and then it had this like clip of just a black screen for like five seconds <laughs> and then more highlights and i was like this is the worst ever i'm gonna get fired they're never gonna bring me back like i thought that was like the that was the end of the end like i remember going out and drinking this probably with dave i don't know if you might have been, but like, I was like, that's it man i'm never working at turner again they're never gonna bring me back and you know, they did. And, and you feel that pressure. I yeah. know you feel that pressure because it meant that much. And it is like, I, I remember that feeling like one screw up equals end of career and I have to go get a normal job. Yeah. It, it, yeah. You felt that much pressure, right? Yeah, it, it was crazy. just so much invested in it. Um, do you ever, uh, you know, we talked about sort of stepping outside. I, I wonder if you've thought about where this show stands historically. I mean, you have to realize it, right? You have to know, like a lot of people consider this the greatest sports studio show that ever existed by a landslide. You, you realize it. You probably it's probably bad to think about that in a way because it, you either put pressure on yourself or you can get lethargic. But you realize it, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you you realize it. I mean, it's a special show, and you know, probably some lightning in a bottle there with what we've captured and. We've definitely tried to translate that to other studio shows. And I think what we're creating with that Tuesday show with Wade and Lefko and Candace, like, like you're never going to have inside the NBA again, but can you create another special, you know, show? Can you do it again? Can yeah. you do it again? Maybe in a different way. Sure. Um, and I mean, the, the other thing, Bo, that I want to point out is like, you know, we, we, we stand, we stand here on the shoulders of people that came before us. Right. So this oh, guy, Tim, this, this guy, Tim Kylie, like, he he was kind of the grand pooba and this guy that kind of came down he worked at espn uh for years and years kind of just cranking out sports centers and sunday countdown and he's like man i'm so tired of just these like studio shows and so he came down here and was kind of like i'm gonna shake it up man and i'm gonna do the show different and we're gonna actually have people just talk to each other with it, rather than talking to this camera which is so weird and people don't do that in real life and he kind of broke all these rules and conventions and then charles came in and allowed him to break even more rules and i was fortunate that he took me under his wing and kind of showed me his way of thinking and why these things work um and so to be able like, again we talk about luck and like where i like to be able to come up under him and, and, and study from him and take the best pieces of what he does and then try to infuse what I like to do or my personality into it on top of that. Like just so fortunate to have a guy like that, that, you know, happen to be here at the same time as me and happen to be kind of creating this revolutionary show. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm fortunate that I got, he, he handed the torch to me and I took it. Um, and, you know, I, I carry that torch now and, you know, hopefully I'll pass it on to somebody else that can continue to ca carry that torch and keep this show going. But, um, you know, yeah, it, 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 very fortunate to work on one of the best shows ever. Uh, and I'm just one small little piece of that, you know, it's all these people that pour their heart and soul and effort and time into it to create what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty amazing. Uh, again, when you take a step back, like a lot of time we're just in it and again, we're grinding through it. But when you take that step yeah. back, big picture, yeah, I'm fortunate to be where I am, man, and, and work on the show. I mean, the, the show's place in history is humongous. And you mentioned Tim Kiley. I think, you know, the one thing he did with that show is sort of that philosophy of conversational. Uh, I, I feel like that's a big part of what he did that you've carried forward. And I remember, you know, when I was starting out on camera, like with the Braves, and he said, don't use a teleprompter. Yeah. Just talk just talk, be yourself. You know, when you, he, I specifically remember him saying, if you're reporting on a fire, you don't say the blaze, blah, 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 blah. It's a fire. Just call it a fire. Uh, be conversational. And I think that's a big part of what he did and handed to you. And you've carried so much further. It'll be interesting to see because you talk about at some point, you're going to hand this show off to somebody else, uh, which may not be easy. I would imagine like, uh, cause yeah. it's now your baby and you've yeah. carried this baby uh, and you, you, at some point you have to let it go and, 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 and you know, go on to somebody because you can't do it till you're 75. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or can and, and, you, and, Jeremy? Uh, but I don't, I don't think I want to work till I'm 75. Uh, there's other things I want to do with my life, but sure. we'll, we'll maybe I have to, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, like, again, that's what, that's what TK did. He handed it off to me and I'm sure, you know, now where I am in my, like, that's not, it's not easy to do. It's not easy to let go oh. of something that you created and you baked and you built you know and um so hats off to him for for doing it and um as difficult as i feel it is right now yeah you know who, you know a year from now two years five years from now i'm gonna have to do it and um hopefully i can do it as gracefully as he did it and um give it to whoever you know deserves that next shot at doing it 
Well, where does the show go in the future with with I'm talking about like with the chain the way the broadcasting is changing and viewing is changing. Where where do you see inside in, in three, five years, something like that? Mm, yeah, I mean interesting. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but like that's I think that's, you know, I wouldn't say it keeps me awake at night, but it's again, how do we keep the show relevant and fresh and not like uh, this was a show, a great show five years ago, but it's a great show today. So um, you know, we just find ourselves in this you know, and again, it changes more rapidly now than it did ever. But yeah. you know, in, in this in this intersection of sports, uh, pop culture, basketball, um, you know, and all that, and just kind of trying to you know push it all and, and, and keep it relevant and fresh. And so, yeah, I mean, it's weird. Like, I, you know, <clears throat> my kids don't even watch TV. You know, like they, they watch YouTube or they watch things on demand or you know videos on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. But like. They do not watch TV, so it's changing, and and to think it's going to stay the same, uh, it's it's definitely not. Um, these kids' viewing habits are not the same as you and I, and like even to watch whole games, like you know, like I try to get my son to watch, you know, a football game or a basketball game, and you know, or an Atlanta United game. He likes he loves soccer, but like to have him sit there for two or three hours, it's it's not happening, man. You know, nope. he'll go play his video games, come back, check in maybe for five minutes, go back, do something else. Um, so. Um, I guess all that's just to say it's it's changing, and if, if we don't keep up with the viewing habits of this younger generation that are going to come up and be the next consumers, uh, in, you know, of everything and watching ads, then um, we're we're, we're going to fall apart really quick. And I think that's why, like things like HBO Max um, and what we're doing at Turner is is super important, and and leaning into, you know, people do not consume content the same way they did you know, five sure. years, 10 years ago to 20 years ago, even going to the movie theaters and, you know, now like, Hey, you can watch these first release movies on HBO max, man. That's pretty amazing. Like you don't have to go to the movie theater to do it. So, um, it's just, you know, maybe that's not the way I, I'd like to go to a movie theater and see it on a huge screen and then stereo that's the experience, you know? Um, yeah. And I like that, but like, that doesn't mean the kids of today, they're used to watching on these like phones as big, you know, they're okay. Oh, I can watch it on a 50 inch TV. That's way better than my phone right yeah. here. So, um, you know, watching a movie at home might be just good for them. Is, is that scary at all to you? The, the the way it's changing so rapidly and in such a big way. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if "scary" is the right word. It's just like it's changing, and we we need to adapt. And if we don't, then we're going to be dinosaurs and extinct soon. So, um, you know, like I think it, I think of it more of a challenge, and um, you know, kind of keeps me motivated to keep it, keep it fresh, and again, keep thinking about how we can evolve this. You know, I mean, again, like we just got the NHL deal, so like, what's that going to look like? What's that going to feel like? Um, you know, what can we do creative that makes us stand out? It's not just you know, same old, same old. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, that's interesting to me. I, I, because we talk about your investment in the show itself and in the Tuesday night show as well. And I know you supervise some other stuff. Uh, how do you get information on the changing viewing habits? How do you take that in and, and try to use it to, to plan going forward? Who gives you the information and where do you go with it? Yeah. I mean, we have, we have lots of meetings about it. You know I mean? Again, we work for a big company that has a lot of different departments and research and data driven and, you know, bleacher reports and other, you know, thing that we run. And just, there, there's, a, there's plenty of information out there. And then, you know, we try to get people in a room and again, not just all the executives are not, we, we want to open these rooms up. Cause again, it's not just going to be, you know, me as a 47 year old white guy, like deciding what kids of America is going to watch, you know, next yeah. week it's all of us. Right. So it's these young kids that just came in from college and interns and we want everybody's voice in there and that's going to make a better product at the end of the day. So it's just kind of having these conversations and talking about it. And, you know, we're not going to decide in one meeting how we're going to execute, you know, all of NHL hockey for the next seven years, but we're starting those conversations and the more we talk and the more we include all these different voices uh, across the spectrum, it's going to create a better product. So that's, that's kind of how we try to do it. I think that's one of the great things, at least in my experience at Turner Sports, is that how much young people are listened to, how much a diverse group of people are listened to. Uh, everybody has an active voice. Everybody's, in, at least in my experience, listened to, and and that opinion is valued, and not just valued, but I think often used and employed. I think that's critical, uh, and I, I don't know if, if you feel the same way, but that's been my experience. Yeah, no, I, I, look, I think it's super important, and 
I manage all our production assistants. So we have like 15 production assistants. They're the young, basically the youngest people next to interns that kind of come in the building. And I tell them all like, look, use your voice. You got to speak up. And like, that's not always easy as a, you know, because you're nervous, right? What's that? Because you'd be nervous talking to oh, 100%, a producer yeah. I mean, walk into a boss's office, like, you know, a guy that like runs the whole network like that. That's yeah. scary, man. Or, and it's, it's even more scary now when we're in Zoom and these WebExes, it makes it more awkward to speak up. But I tell them all like, look, you got to use your voice. You got to stand out. You got, you know, you can't be scared or timid in these moments. You need to, you know, express how you feel. Because again, we work in TV, so there's no right or wrong answers here. There's just a lot of personal opinion. Like, it's not like, we don't, we, I, I sold a hundred widgets, so I'm the best widget maker, right? Like there's yeah, no yeah. like fact, like baseline. It's just like, hey, I thought that looked really cool. Someone else might say, hey, I think this looks really cool. And at the end of the day, we're just trying to figure out what the most people think look cool. Um, how did, how does a young person best express that in a meeting to you? How, how is that successfully done for people who are coming up and trying to learn to navigate that, that what can be a scary moment, honestly? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, look, I tell them like I go to my bosses and it's not always easy still. Right. Like it, it's, but um, you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. I mean, like no matter what you're doing, right. Like you have to step outside that comfort zone to grow. So, um, you know, I still can try, I, I continue to push myself and live by that. And like, I've had a lot of scary conversations where like, I'm like, I don't know how they're going to react to this, but deep down, I know this is how I feel about it and I'm passionate about it. So I'm going to relay that. And if they take it, great. And I think more times than not, they have. But like, there's other times they're like, no, we're hey, we're not okay. That's okay too. Like, yep. but if, if I don't, if I don't voice what I'm feeling or um, how I want to approach something, and I don't tell my bosses about it, then there's no way you know they'll ever know. Like, I, I tell everybody also, like, you have to look out for yourself in your career, right? Like, no one's gonna come to me and be like, hey, Jeremy, I want to make you producer of Inside the NBA. That's just not gonna happen. Like, yeah, you can think it's gonna happen, but it's not. So you need to go tell people like what you want to do, and not just me, but like tell. Craig Berry, the guy that runs it, Scooter Vertino, the guy, you know, number two there. Like, you got to tell yeah. all these people what you want to do. And that way, at least they know. And it's in their roadmap of like, oh, hey, I know Jeremy wants to produce inside the NBA. So, like, maybe there's ways to get him opportunities. If you're not yeah. out there telling people even that stuff, like for your own personal, like, hey, this is what I want to do in my career, then people aren't going to guess or go out of their way to try to help you. So, um, you know, it's scary, uh, but you have to do it if, if you want to advance and keep moving. I thought about this. You know, I don't know exactly how long you've been producing inside the NBA. Do you remember your first show and, and mm -hmm. were you, what it was like, where, what happened, anything about it? Do you remember your first inside the NBA or is it, is it blurred all together at this point? It, it has blurred all together. I definitely <laughs> do not remember the first time I, I sat in a chair and produced inside the NBA. Um, that's sort of wild, Jeremy, because that's a big, big deal. Yeah, I know. I know. It's a it's, huge deal. Um, I, it also just shows you how much memory I'm losing these days. But, um, <laughs> I, I can relate. Uh, I do like I did produce a uh, a live basketball game, and I remember it was it was the Seattle SuperSonics. It would take it, 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 that that shows you how long that does it take was. you back. Yeah, but yeah, like because I guess with more with inside, I probably got like chant like I've been doing the show like full time for like seven or eight years now. Um, but I've got opportunities for years before that to like sit in the chair and do a one-off here, a one-off there. Um, yep. And so yep. that's probably why I can't remember the exact like first show I did. Um, yeah. I, look, I, I can tell you uh, the, I, and I, it might not have been the first time, but like when you sit in that chair for the first time and you're like, all right, Hey, I'm going to tell Charles Barkley what to do. Like, that's a scary moment, you know? Yeah. Uh, it takes a know? little courage, right? For sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're like, Oh, this is Charles. And like Charles would like, knew me before I started producing the show, but like not know me, know me. Right. Like I, you know, and so like, and he's um, coming off a relationship with his buddy TK for sure. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I mean like, and they got to prove dynamic. yourself. So I got to figure out what my dynamic and how I work with them. Right. And like, you got, you got to build that. And that doesn't just happen again in one show or two shows. It takes years and years. And, you know, uh, now I still don't know if he knows who I am, but like, at least he knows my voice. And, and <laughs> that's part of the fun. Uh, how do you, at this point, after doing it so long, how do you stay motivated? What motivates you? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. And again, like, I mean, I just talked about like continuing to try to push myself, right. And keep it fresh. So one, it's kind of that uh, fear of, of not doing it well or losing your Leaving job. Leaving the black in the middle losing. of the highlight. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, I don't feel like I'm going to lose my job, but like you want to keep it entertaining and keep it fresh and continue to get nominated for Emmy awards and like all those things. So, so that's, in the show specifically, like that's kind of what motivates me is to keep it 
fresh and relevant and entertaining. Um, and then I would say just in my career in general, like I've always been trying to push myself and find out what's next and how I can advance. So, you know, like I was an associate, I was a production assistant for five years. I was an associate director for seven years. I've been producing now for, well, I produced at NBA TV for about seven or eight years. And now I've been doing this for about seven or eight years. So, you know, that's kind of where I feel like my ceiling of like, all right, I've kind of done it for a while now and like kind of yeah. what's next. So, you know, yeah. So I'm looking like, hey, and that's what excites me about this NHL thing is maybe there's opportunities to do something with that. Or again, it's going to create movement around our company regardless of whether I'm involved directly with it or indirectly, but there's going to be opportunities and new things. And again, Shift stepping out. outside my stepping outside of my own comfort zone and like, hey, this is a little scary, but yeah, let me try to manage this group of people or what if I can put this together? So it's just kind of, trying to keep it fresh and, and, and figuring out what's next. I know you mentioned Malcolm Gladwell. Are, are there any books that have been particularly useful to you, motivational to you uh, that, that you've read that, that you could recommend to people? Yeah. I mean, I, I love all those Gladwell books. Um, I, I tear through those. I'm not like a, I'm not a huge reader. My wife is a huge reader. She'll read like one book a week. Uh, like it takes the right book for me to get into it. Uh, but if I get into it, like I'll, I'll, I'll read it quickly. Um, but yeah, I mean like Gladwell, the funny thing is I'll share this story is I remember when I was in college, I kind of knew I wanted to get in sports TV and I was interning at a local sport, uh, TV station in the sports department. And I read Marv Albert's biography about like how he called play by play. And I like, I, again, I can't remember inside, but I remember I read this Marv Albert biography and like, it was like, Oh, like this is how he does it. And this is his whole approach. And it was just interesting to read that. And it, it's like, it's things like that when I'm like, Oh, this is interesting. And like, this can help me in my career and further me. Like those are the books I like to get into it and read. So, um, you know, I think you can take, like, I also like, like books about like leadership and, you know, not necessarily just TV, but like how, how, uh, great former leaders have led people, uh, in different, you know, different careers. Sure. It is wild to think about like, you know, there's, there's gotta be thousands and thousands of people out there who wanted to do what you do. And through both hard work and, like you said, luck and, and sort of the path working out right, you've ended up here. It's it's amazing, man. It's it's just it's such a it's such a good story filled with with hard work, luck, and capitalizing on all of that. I think. Yeah, no, I I appreciate that. Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's cool to to be a part of this for sure, and again, to um, kind of lead one of these great shows. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, college game day is another one of those great shows. And um, if you can find yourself attached to one of them in any way, like that's why I was just getting the door and find a way in and like get, you know, like, again, we just started as loggers, man. Like we, we just got our yeah. foot in the door. And then once your foot's in the door, then it's on you to, you know, show everybody what you can do with that. But get your foot in the door, however you can, uh, logger, intern, whatever. And like, once you're in, then, then, you know, that, show that your value work starts because people will see your work ethic and see how hard you're willing to work and you know again first guy in last guy out whatever it is you know best highlights you know creative ideas all of that um and i've been fortunate that you know i've had some creative ideas and uh good executions of shows and um built it up to where it is today all right jeremy uh thank you so much we won't take up any more of your time go enjoy your family and a rare thursday off during the season uh, yeah, thanks so thank much. you thank you nfl draft i will enjoy my uh, thursday night off <laughs> all right take care bud all right see you bud all right thanks so much to jeremy levin uh, we hope you get something out of that broadcast it was a fun one for me personally because i've been so close to that story we want to remind you again, like, subscribe, and rate our broadcast. And more importantly, I, we'd love to hear directly from you to get your feedback. What can we do better? Who do you want to hear as guests on the show? My Twitter handle is at NBA Bo. That's N-B-A-B-E-A-U. And you can reach out directly to Sports Business Classroom at Sports Biz Class. That's Sports Biz Class on Twitter. So get in touch with either of us, like, subscribe, rate. It really is important to us. And once again, thanks so much for listening, everybody. <laughs>